Hello, everybody, and welcome to this presentation. My name is Lee Snyder, the product manager for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today I want to introduce the new layout editor that's available in Tackle Structures version 2020. So to do that, let's go ahead and take a look quick at this snapshot. These are the dialog boxes that were needed in order to create a layout for your drawings. So this snapshot is from 2019i. When you would then go to layout, it would open up this dialog box where you could define whether you wanted assembly drawings, single part drawings, engineer drawings, GA drawings. And then per layout, you would then click on table layout, which would open up this new dialog box where you could define the drawing sizes that should be used. And then you would click on tables, which would allow you to see the available tables that you could choose from. Once chosen, they would show up on the right hand side. You could then define where those tables were positioned in relation to the drawing frame, for example, or from neighboring tables. And then once you were done with that, you would click update, apply, OK several times, open up the drawing, and then you'd be able to see the changes that you had made. If you needed to make additional changes, you would close out of the drawing, reopen these dialog boxes, and modify and tweak as needed. You could also access the fixed sizes or the calculated sizes dialog boxes from here. And then when you went to print, you had this frames button, which would open up the drawing frames property dialog box where you could control the frames and fold marks if needed. So what we did is we took the drawing frames property dialog box and all of these other dialog boxes and consolidated them into a new visual editor to where you can just simply drag and drop your tables and position them where you want them to be all while in the drawing. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. So I'll open up version 2020 here. To access the new layout editor, you can go to the file menu down to editors and open up drawing layout editor, or you can search for that in the top right hand corner quick launch, or you can simply come choose a table in your drawing, right click and choose open layout editor. We added this right click option to where you could visually modify your layouts back in version 2017 but you couldn't create a new layout using the layout editor, which is why we had those dialog boxes still available. But now in the new layout editor, you have the ability to create and modify existing layouts. So this is what it looks like. You have the ribbon at the top where you can create a new layout. You can add tables, you can save your layouts and then close the layout editor. Over on the right hand side, you have the ability to show the hidden tables or not. You can show the table names or not. Over here, you have the ability to define the drawing layout. So right now I'm in an assembly drawing. So these are the drawing layouts available for an assembly drawing. Here you have the ability to define the layout types and what drawing type they should be available for, whether it's single part drawings, GA drawings, etc. Beneath that, you can then define the drawing sizes. So these are the ones that we have available out of the box. To create your own or modify, you can use this edit button, which I'll do here in a minute. And then here you can easily see the tables that are in use on your current drawing. For each table, you can define the scale and adjust the rotation. And then you also have the drawing views options here to control the margins and the spaces. So I'll show you how this all works. So let's go ahead and create a brand new layout. So let's give this a new name and call this Trimble Solutions USA. I'm currently working on an 11 by 17 drawing. So let's keep that consistent here and I'll go ahead and click on create. And now this gives me a blank canvas that I can begin working on. So the first thing that I want to do over here on the right hand side is define the drawing layout types that these should be available for. So I'm just going to make this available for the assembly drawing, which is what I'm currently working in, and the single part drawings. And now I can begin adding my table. So let's go ahead and click the Add Tables button. You can then choose the table that you want to use and then simply snap that into position on your drawing, just like I did there. If you want to position that after you've snapped it in place, you can select it. And you can see this magenta anchor that tells you where the drawing is anchored to. And as I begin clicking and dragging, you can see that that anchor will change position. So it's automatically going to determine the closest anchor point, And then it'll tell me the dimensional distance from that. So I want that over in the right hand side. If you want to grab this handle and right click and move, you can be more precise 
or you can just simply drag that over and you can see the dimensional values updating there on the screen. If you know the name of the table that you want to use, you can simply search for it here. So let's just type in BOM and I'll, I'll grab that table and click and position that there on my drawing. And let's add one more here. We'll just search for a call off. So let's use this type A call off. And then I'll just right click and free position this on my drawing. And then I can click and drag and further refine that wherever I want this to be. So if I want a half inch space right there, then I'll just leave that. You'll notice here that my drawing views are overlapping with the table. So I just need to simply bump those. I can do that using the drawing views. So let's say that I add in a quarter inch value here, where typically I want my drawing views to have a quarter inch gap from the drawing frame. You can see that it will then update those and how those will be positioned. I can also do the same for my drawing views. You can see that there is no gap between them. If I want to create a gap in the vertical, I can just key in a value here and you can see that the position values will automatically be updated. So if I want to include a horizontal gap for any section details that are created, I can do that. Then I'll just add this vertical spacing there as well. So once I'm happy with these settings, if I want to add additional sizes to this drawing layout, I can do that. So let's go ahead and click edit here. This will open up my drawing size settings layout. I have the ability to see the existing names that are available, the width and height that's being used. If I want this drawing size to be considered during the auto size routines that Tecla runs, and then I have the ability to remove that as well. In the bottom, I can control the frames that should be used for each drawing size. Right now, I'm just going to leave this be, but if you want, you can add a primary and secondary frame and also include fold marks if needed. So let's add a new size. I'll go ahead and hit the plus sign here, and then I can just simply choose from one in the drop down list. That will then bring in the name and the width and height values that are associated to that. Or I can just simply just typing in whatever text I want. So if I just want to rename this to letter or something more specific to my company, I can do that. If I want to edit the values here, I can just simply begin typing. I'm actually going to leave this at 11 for this example. And I do want this size to be considered in the auto size. So the way that this works in Tecla structures is if the drawing views that need to be placed on the drawing overlap with the tables, Tecla will then look at the next size up to determine if the drawing views can fit on that drawing without overlapping with the tables. Once it finds a drawing size with enough space, that's the size that will be used as the drawing is generated. So I'll let that be used in the calculation. I'll go ahead and click on OK. And now that I have that drawing size available, I want to go and see what that looks like. So when I toggle to that size, it'll prompt me to save the changes that I've just made to this 11 by 17. But it'll also give me the ability to update the tables and the margins that I'm currently using on this drawing and give me the option to update those to this new size that I've created. If I didn't want to do that, I could just simply deselect that. In this case, I do want to use these tables and margin sizes. I want those carried forward. So I'll go ahead and click on save. And now when I toggle to this letter option, and I can see that I have the table and drawing view options down here all remaining the same. But because of the sheet size, I may need to make some adjustments. So here with my bill material, let's go ahead and move that up to the top right hand corner. For my call off, I can click and drag and position this to a different location. Let's say I want to anchor it there. I can see that these drawing views do overlap with my table. So when this drawing was generated, Tekle would automatically use the bigger size, my 11 by 17, so that it could fit. But I'm able to still set up this drawing size even with those views. Another option that I have is that if I come back here to edit, I can come to my width and height settings and I can right click and choose swap orientation and click OK. That will allow me to see if this is going to look any different. I can see that my call off is hanging over, so I may not want to do that but it just gives me a visual way to see instantly what this is going to look like on my drawing. So let's go ahead and change that back here and we can see what this layout will look like on a more simplified drawing. So once we're satisfied with the changes, let's go ahead and close and save the layout editor. So I'll save that and just make sure that everything is up to date. This is the drawing that I was initially working in that's using that eight and a half by 11. So let's go ahead and change this to the 11 by 17 that we created. And now this is the proper drawing with the settings that we wanted it to use.
So let's go ahead and see how this 8.5 by 11 would look. Let's open up a more simplified drawing. So I'll come to this here. We just have the one view of this angle. I can change the layout here to use our Trimble Solutions USA option. And this 8.5 by 11 size here, I'll go ahead and hit modify. And now we can see these showing up for us. I can see that my call off here isn't pulling in any value. So if I want to quickly edit that, I can do that just by right clicking and opening the editor. I can simply delete that one off, come back here to add table. Let's search for a call off here and I'll choose this one. Position that here into the drawing and then I can click and drag that wherever I may need that to be. But now I can see that it is actually bringing in a value. So maybe that's the call off that I want to use. I can then update the settings there. And now back in my drawing, I can see that I have text being pulled in. So that's how quick and easy it is to be able to visually see that in the editor and update the drawing back and forth as needed. As mentioned before, we made these changes only to the assembly drawings and to the single part drawings. So if I want to just double check that, I can come here to my GA drawing, go to layout. And then I can see that I don't have the Trimble Solutions USA option under the layout. Because we were working in the assembly drawings, we know that that is there. If I want to just double check here on my single part drawings, I can do that. And there I can see the Trimble Solutions USA option with the two sizes that we created. So this is a great way to visually see the layout that's going to be used on your drawing and to instantly modify it or create a brand new one from scratch like we just showed. So as mentioned before, this is available in Techless Structures version 2020. As always, we invite you to try it out, send us any feedback that you may have, and we hope you enjoy this new development.